<laughs> I know it's January. Please excuse the dying Christmas tree that I've completely forgotten to water. I'm gonna get rid of it soon, I swear. I promised my roommate in May when we moved in that I would build us a coffee table. And so now that it is mid-January, I figured, you know, it's probably time to make good on that promise given that our lease is ending soon. <laughs> So today we're gonna to be learning how to make this live edge slab table. Let's get to it. All right, so I've got this big rough cut slab I bought right off the sawmill. What am I supposed to do next? Step one is surfacing it, which is basically just means we need to make the flat faces actually flat. This is the first time I'm using a slab that doesn't fit in a planer, but luckily I have access to a ShopBot PRS Alpha CNC machine, so I'll be using the surfacing function on that. You may have seen this done with a router and a jig, and this is the exact same idea, just using computers. What it does is run the surfacing bit over the entire flat surface of the piece of wood, and then every time I rerun it, I drop it three thousandths of an inch, or three thou. That way we can get closer and closer to the lowest points until we flatten the whole thing. Once it's done, I just need to remove the pieces that I have holding it on and then get to cleaning it up. I started by pulling the big chunks off with a chisel, and then eventually I graduated up to a wire brush, and then eventually I graduated up to a sander. And just a forewarning, this project is like 90% sanding, so there's going to be a lot of fast forwarding and skipping over sanding because no one wants to watch that. Oh my god, the other side too. No, we are skipping over that. So my slab is pretty nice, but it's not perfect, and it's got some cracks in it that I need to fill with epoxy. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna clean them out with a brush and then with some compressed air, and then we're gonna fill them with clear epoxy. One of the knots I need to fill actually goes all the way to the back, so I'm just gonna flip it over, masking tape over the back so that it doesn't leak out and epoxy my slab to the table, and then fill it. Many, many, many thanks to Total Boat for not only being an awesome sponsor of today's video, but also being a great supporter of our nonprofit arm and our educational outreach as well. Thank you so much, guys. So what I'm gonna do is just take their two-part high-performance epoxy resin, mix it up, and then using a syringe, I'm forcing it down into the knot. Um, something I've had issues with in the past is epoxy not getting all the way down, and actually, I did have that issue a little bit, even with the syringe, but a couple passes of epoxy and everything gets filled. And now that it's dry, it's time to surface the top. So, um, you've already seen this process, so we're gonna really skip through it. Since I know I'm gonna be cutting these icky ends off, I decided I was just gonna screw the slab directly to the table. In the spirit of fessing up to our mistakes, I will admit that I did not pre-drill the first screw, and as a result, it sheared off in the middle of the wood, so. I lost a screw and I had to remove it with vice grips. Unsurprisingly, there were little tiny holes in the epoxy that I did before I surfaced it. And once I surfaced it, I got to see all of those much more clearly. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more epoxy and fill in those gaps. And once that was dry, I did one last finishing pass on the shop bot and I even took off the dust collector and cleaned up this disastrous mess in the wood shop so that you could see just how satisfying surfacing can be. All right, now that the top is surfaced, the next step is to cut the ends to be parallel to each other. And so I did this with a track saw. Many thanks to my friend Umit in the back for holding down the floating end of my track. See, this is the perk of working in a public wood shop, you guys. You have friends just help you when you don't even ask for it. I want to show you this mistake that I made while I was surfacing the table. In one of the runs, instead of 0 .03, I accidentally hit 0.3 and gouged the side of this edge like that. And you know what? Sometimes crap happens and you gotta work through it. So. I'm gonna have to curve this over a little more than I originally intended, but I actually like the way it turned out. So I'm just gonna sand it all the way down so that you can't see that gouge anymore. And we're gonna go from there. And 
once I'm done sanding, it was time to varnish. Uh, very kindly, Total Boat sent me three of their UV protecting varnishes, so it was Gleam 2.0 in both glossy and satin, as well as Halcyon. And I ended up, I couldn't decide, so I ended up making test pieces of all three to see what they looked like on the exact wood that I was using. So I used cutoffs of box elder maple in both end grain and face grain, and based on that, I decided I liked Gleam and Gloss the best. As per the instructions on the side of the can, which I luckily did read, um, the Gleam varnish needs to be diluted down 25% for the first coat. So going on to raw wood, you need to use this thinner. And so I did, and I, as you can see, made a mess. Also, I made way too much thinned varnish. I should have made like a third of that. I'm varnishing both sides to protect the wood, and I decided to do the back first so that I could flip it over and let it dry on those stickers and not really care if the varnish on the back is perfect because no one's really going to see it. Oh, this is my favorite part of the entire piece of wood. That crack is so beautiful. So for the next couple days, I built up the varnish to four to six coats. So after doing this final coat and not being 100% happy with it, I chatted with Total Boat about why it had some inconsistencies, and it basically, I varnished it wrong. You have to start from one end and keep brushing on the wet edge, which means that you're brushing from the section you just applied towards the section you're applying and sort of feathering the edges in um, so that you get this kind of like even varnish going over the whole thing. All right. This slab is done, and I'm so happy with the way it came out. And also, this was my first time using varnish. I always go for kind of natural mineral oils and waxes, but because this is box elder, it's got this these like beautiful red streaks in it, and those need to be UV protected or else they'll fade over time. So I used the Total Boat Gleam 2.0, which has UV protectant in it, and I'm I love it. I'm really excited because I have this unique red. I may as well play into that some more. So I'm going to build some copper pipe legs and I have never used copper pipe before. I've never even cut copper pipe before. So this is going to be an adventure for all of us. <laughs> and I actually originally was going to do a four legged table, but the more I look at this, the more I realize I think it needs to be a three legged table. It needs to have two inset a little bit from this side and then one out on this like wave form almost because the center of mass of this is roughly like here. So if I just do two legs there, it's always gonna be falling over on this, um, on this pointy side. So I have this pipe cutter. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the leg lengths. No, the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out how the heck to open <laughs> the pipe cutter. So I believe that a standard coffee table is 18 inches tall. I'm gonna double check. So the elbow adds half an inch and the T adds another half an inch. So we're gonna do 18 inches minus two for the table, for the slab width, minus one for hardware. So my legs are gonna be 15 inches tall. So I'm gonna mark 15. So I open that up, I'm gonna line the line up and tighten it down. Oh, okay, so that scored it. And then I'm gonna go in a little bit more and then a little bit more until it loose, okay, so oh! Then I just need to repeat that so that I have three legs. All right, so now I have three legs. So my legs are gonna go like there, there, and there. So I guess like five inches in. It's silly, because this is all just eyeballing. So this spot will be our first leg. We'll go right there. Boop. Whatever. It's live edge. Why am I using a square? Great question, Zyla. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily sort of pick that point. 
And then, to be honest, arbitrarily gonna pick a point here. I'm skipping over the general construction because your slab is gonna be different, so you're gonna have to custom do something for that. So I used super glue because I decided that soldering or brazing them was a little bit excessive, but if I were to go back and do it again, I would probably use something a little better, like at the very least, two-ton epoxy. Um, something that has its own oomph to it, like its own volume. To finish up the frame, I just glued little end caps onto the end of those table legs so that it wouldn't tear up my carpet or floor. And... Table. Let's see if it can support itself. And now for the last step, which is just attaching the frame to the slab. And it was super easy. I just used these copper tube straps from Home Depot and screwed them down. Let's remove the band. Hey. hey! Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Oh, it's a little wobbly. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so much for watching this episode of Beauty and the Bolts. Don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button and then, as if that wasn't enough work already, click the little bell so that you'll get notified every time I post a new video with a new awesome fun project. Uh, I know I've been super heavy in the woodworking lately. If you'd like me to take a step back from that and go back to doing some electronics, please let me know down in the comment section. Lastly, if you follow us on Instagram, you've probably been seeing billions of posts of our Princesses with Power Tools calendar. This fundraiser is still going on. I know it's January, but um, there's still 11 more months in here. Uh, and that's 11 more role models for you and your daughters and sons. And also many thanks to Total Boat for sponsoring July. They've got the mermaid. We are a nonprofit organization, so all of that money, all of the Merchandise money and the ad money and the sponsorship money is going back into the nonprofit to teach as many kids as possible how to build things, make things, and engineer things. So, thank you so much for your support. Signing off. This is Bo.